Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to go through the file select file and file select folder commands, which allow users to pick files and folders through a window prompt. I've also added part five. I forgot to in my previous videos, uh, which is going to be the next video of this video, which is going to show you a file select folder window, which is a little bit more modern looking. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. So let's get started. We will get started with file select file and file select file basically allows you to pick a file. So let me show you a quick example. And because it's a command and that makes you pick a file and there's going to be a path to that file, obviously that will be output into an output variable like that. So I'm going to display the output variable in a message box. If I run this, I get a small window like that. And here, if I select a file and hit open, it's basically going to remember that files path that I have selected. So this is how file select file works. And there's obviously a lot of things you can do with it. So let me first explore how you can change root directory. So now just now you've seen how the selected default folder was the folder where this script was saved. I can change that to, for example, desktop. And if I run it, then my selection folder initially is going to be set to my desktop. You can also make it select by default uh, file. So let me go back to a script there and then test script one dot haki, which is going to be this file. So if I go ahead and run this, it will populate that file name that I have spelled out in my file name field, as well as the folder is going to change to my script directory. You can also change the prompt as well. So if I type out, say, for example, select a file with lots of exclamation marks, that is going to be visible at top left hand corner. Should you wish to uh, change that now, this by default doesn't allow you to select multiple files. So if I try to drag and select multiple files, it doesn't work. If I click that and then while holding down the left control key, if I try to click the other ones, it doesn't let me select multiple files. That's when the options kick in. So if I'm going to put in an option of M there and let me just remove this as well. This will allow me to pick multiple files. So if I go ahead and run it now, I am able to drag and select multiple files like that and also use the control key to select multiple files. And if I go ahead and open it, my first line in the message box, the output variable is going to be the path to the folder. Um, and the next lines will be the files names separated by line break. So in order to uh, say, for example, loop through all these files, you can use a method like this. So you've got loop pass here. So this will make you pick the file. And if you haven't picked any files, it will display a message box to say you haven't picked any files. And then it will go into the loop path. So in the message box, you saw the first line. The first line here is going to be the path of the folder. And then it's going to look into e each and every one of the files that I've selected. So if I go ahead and select these three and then hit open, it's going to go. My folder is this folder. And then it will say, okay, the first item that I've picked is this second one. And the third one is that let's, uh, look at the next option, which is going to be file select file output bar and S. So instead of doing an S, if I do, if I just do a normal file select file, for example, let me just comment this out and run it. This dialog box is for you to pick a file, right? So you only have the file name and the extension and open button here. Whereas if you use the S option, it's going to change to save now. So you can see how the file name is there and save as type and the button has changed to save. If I say, for example, selected a file 
and then hit save that's gonna display the path to that file like that that's gonna be stored into alpha variable you can also specify a random let's say test script 4 and the auto r key and hit save and that's gonna be displayed now you have here save as type text document which you can modify i'll show you in a bit if you select the text document and go my new text document unfortunately you might think that the text extension is going to be added to this but it doesn't so if i hit save it's just gonna give me up to the file name that i specified there's no way around it unfortunately there is one thing that you can do should you wish which is that if you know what extension the file is going to be saved as you can specify that at the end and manually attach that if you notice that the user hadn't attached any extension to the end of the file name so for example my new my new text file my new text document let's say and then if i hit this as text file and let's say i'm a user and i forgot to type out the text extension.txt at the end of the file name if i hit save because i know that i was going to save it as a text file i can append the text extension at the end of the file name like that okay so next up is file select file and i'm going to go through some uh, options and i will start with number one. Oh, before i do that actually obviously when you put in the option of s this is not going to save the file or whatever that you're trying to do in the path that you specify if you actually want to say uh, create a text file for example you actually have to do file append and create that text file like that so if i go ahead and run this i'll go hello dot txt and then hit save by using the file append command you will see the hello file being created like that so file select file by itself won't do anything all right so i'll really move on to the next option which is number one now without the option number one what it's going to do when i select a say for example if i typed out test script for the auto key which doesn't exist in this folder it's still gonna still gonna display that obviously i didn't put in a message box so if i go test script for the auto key it's still gonna display that test script for the auto key but if you put in an option of one that makes it so that you actually have to pick a file that does exist so you can't just go randomly put a name in there and then expect it to select that when the file doesn't exist so you have to specify one that does exist like number three for example then it works number eight is another option uh, which prompts you to create a new file if you selected a file that doesn't exist or selected a file name that doesn't exist so for example if i go ahead and run it and um let's say this is open right so if you try to open say test script for the auto key which doesn't exist then it's going to give you a prompt and ask you whether you want to create a file or not right so if i hit yes then it actually doesn't create it so you have to uh you have to use the file append command to create it now s16 is a option that uh, prompts to overwrite the file if the file exists again this doesn't actually override it um, if i just do s and run it and try to go test script one dot auto key which exists already right if i hit save it's not going to give me any prompt it's just going to go ahead and save it doesn't really save but it, it will acknowledge the input if you go s16 it will ask you whether you want to override it because it exists right but if i say for example selected one that didn't it did that doesn't exist and go ahead then it's just gonna not give you that prompt and go ahead with it number 32 is a 
option to look at shortcuts as it is. What I mean by that is if you go and try to open up, say, Google Chrome, this is your shortcut without the option. So let me just comment the option out and then run it. Um, it's going to point to the original file, which means if I hit open, it's going to point to the program file, Google Chrome application chrome.executable, which is not the shortcut. So if you want to point to the shortcut itself, you use the option 32. If I go ahead, ahead and run it and select Google Chrome shortcut and hit open, this time I'm going to get the path to the shortcut itself instead of the Google Chrome executable file. And this will allow me to, if I go uh, M32, now multiple file M32, this will allow me to select multiple files, including the shortcut. So what I mean by that is right now it does work, right? But without this option, if I just had M, this is not going to allow me to select Google Chrome shortcut as well, because it's looking at the little tooltip that you see right here the application folders, Google Chrome executable file. So if I try to open this up, it's going to give me an error. You can only choose multiple items in the same folder. So if you want to apply multiple options, um, so for example, multiple selection as well as option 32 and just go M32. And this allows you to select multiple files uh, within the folder and look at shortcuts as they are. Now, if you do not pick any files, then the error level is going to be set to one, in which case if you do an if error level and error level is satisfied or the if statement is satisfied, then it's going to show you the message box that says no file is selected. So for example, if I press cancel here or exit out from this exit button, it's going to satisfy this if statement and it's going to show me no file was selected. And lastly, you can apply filters to the file types like this. So document, um, you can specify anything you want in here. So you can call it document and you can spell out different kinds of document extensions. Doesn't even have to be documents. And then video, audio, auto -haki script only, dot auto -haki. You can name this, like I said, whatever you want select whatever extension you want. So let me go ahead and run it. It's going to show up that little window for the uh, selection of the file. And as you can see within my first window, I got document. If I cancel, it's going to show me the next one, which gives me video file formats. And then the next one is going to be audio. And then the one after is going to be auto hockey script. And then the last one is going to be whatever I want with whatever file types that I have spelled out. All right, so file select file is that. And I'm going to move on to file select folder. Now, this is going to be a quick one. There's not many things to cover in this space. Um, so let's get started. File select folder, output var, and message box output var is the most basic or the most basic form of selecting a, a folder. If I run it, then you get this ugly looking UI where you get to select folders. And obviously this isn't, this isn't like the file select file window that we have seen, which is more modern, right? Like this. And my next video is going to be about this, right? So it's going to show you a script that allows you to pick a folder, not using this window, but the window you saw before with the file select file command. And with this, if you pick any folders and hit OK, then you're going to get that path to the folder. You can change the starting folder to say C drive if you ever wanted to, then it changes to the C drive. You can also change it to a scripter to make it start from the script directory. And as you can see, the highest folder that you can go to when you set the starting folder to that is going to be that folder. You can only select subfolders like that. Now, if you want to say, for example, start from 
the desktop folder as you saw just now if I move this then it's gonna start from the desktop folder if you wanna if you wanna start from the desktop folder but you want the pre-selected folder to be your a underscore script the your script directory then you can put a star sign like that in front and that's going to make that selected so you will still start from desktop but if I scroll down as you can see the temporary scripts folder the script directory has been pre-selected right if you want to change this to say for example a uh, new starting folder of the script directory but in here you want to instead select the new folder subfolder that you have right here this one right here then you can put the star sign after having put in a new starting folder like that if i go ahead and run it then I'll see the new folder being selected underneath the starting folder, temporary scripts folder. And so I'll just quickly go through the options that we have. So I'll just remove this and option zero makes the make new folder option button hidden. I'll show you what that button looks like. Number one is default and you're going to have that make new folder button. So if I hit uh, temporary scripts folder and hit make new folder it's going to create a new folder like that it actually does create the folder so you can see new folder 2 has been created number 2 allows you to type the name of the folder so you get that field populated so I can go ahead and type out temporary scripts folder I don't know when you would want to do that but uh, that's an option available for you number 3 also allows you to type the folder name out and also make new folders um, with the previous option number two you didn't have the option to create a new folder number four has no options whatsoever you can't type the name out you can't create new uh, new folders as well number five is the same so I'll skip that number six allows you to type the name out so UI is slightly different you've got the build for typing your folder name out on the top and that's basically it you can also change the prompt by providing value in the next uh, parameter then you can see the prompt has been changed like that and lastly if you have a user that doesn't select any folders the error level is again going to be set to one and so if I go ahead and run this and don't select anything just go cancel it's going to meet that if statement and it's going to show me the message box that says no folder selected. This is it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.